Hello, everyone. Joey Pusateri, and I bring you Peace and Grace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, from my office here at First Christian Church. And we pick up our examination of the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 13, beginning with verse 10, and going all the way through uh, verse 17. All right, and that reads like this. Then the disciples came and asked him, him is Jesus, why do you speak to them in parables? He answered, to you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. The reason I speak to them in parables is that seeing they do not perceive, and hearing they do not listen, nor do they understand. With them indeed is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah that says, You will indeed listen, but never understand, and you will indeed look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes, so that they might look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and understand with their heart in turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. All right, this is the word of God for the people of God. Let us go to God in prayer. God, we thank you for this day and for this word. We ask that the seed of your truth might find depth in our souls and that we might turn more towards you in repentance, joy, and hope to proclaim the good news of your kingdom. We ask all these things in the name of the one who reigns within that kingdom, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, this is a uh, interesting passage and a challenging passage uh, because it reveals something or says something uh, perhaps about uh, about the work of God in Christ that we don't like. And so I want to draw our attention to something that happens in the uh, Hebrew Bible in the Old Testament. So if you go to Isaiah 6, you'll see the call of Isaiah to be a prophet. And it says that he goes into the temple and uh, he encounters God and says, you know, woe is me for I'm a man of unclean lips, et cetera, et cetera. And then uh, one of the seraphs takes a hot coal and presses it presses it against his lips, and uh, thereby he is purified. And then he hears a voice saying, you know, who shall go for us? Who shall we send? And Isaiah says, uh, here I am, send me. Okay, this is the call of Isaiah the prophet, who is being called by God to go to the people and do the work of a prophet. Now, you may have heard that passage before. Uh, it is a common one uh, that is uh, preached actually at uh, ordinations. So when a, uh, a somebody becomes ordained, they're going to be a minister, they're going to lead a congregation, be a preacher, you know, chaplain, whatever. Um, this is often a passage that you might hear. And the reason is obvious because it's a call passage. It's, you know, somebody being commissioned by God to go out and do God's work. Uh, and when that happens, it's usually only read through verse 8. And verse 8 says, uh, then I heard a voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me! Exclamation point, in quotation mark, Amen. However, that's not the end of the passage. The end of the passage goes on in verse 9. And he said, Go and say to this people, Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull and stop their ears and shut their eyes so they may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and comprehend with their minds and turn and be healed. Then I said, how long, O Lord? And he said, until cities lie waste without inhabitant and houses without people and the land is utterly desolate until the Lord sends everyone far away and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth part remain in it, it will be burned again like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. Okay, so <laughs> there's a reason you usually don't hear that. Because what we have is God telling Isaiah, okay, uh, I'm going to send you, but this is what you're going to do. You're going to go and you're going to preach to a people uh, uh, and, and have them not hear you and have them not see you and not understand you. Uh, because if they did, they might turn and be healed, but they're not going to hear you or understand you or believe you. Uh, they're not going to accept you, and therefore they will be destroyed. And you will keep 
uh, preaching this message until they are destroyed. Ouch! Uh, so it, we have something very similar with the parables. So it, what it suggests is that what Jesus is saying is the reason that I speak in parables is to fulfill what we know about the fact that there are a lot of people that will not understand and will not see. And because they don't understand and because they don't see, they cannot turn and be healed. And it almost sounds like Jesus is intentionally hiding things from people. Now, I think that's challenging, right? I don't want to soften that or explain it away. It really sounds like Jesus is intentionally hiding the secrets of the kingdom from some people. So when I think through it and try to understand uh, how all of this fits into what I know about Jesus and, and what I believe about the kingdom of God as you know described in the Gospels, the way that I understand this passage is that there are undoubtedly people who do not understand. And there are people who don't even want to understand. And there are people who um, you could tell them you know, all about God's power and grace and love and so on and so forth, and they just don't care, and they just don't want to hear it. And that is an uncomfortable reality, and it's an unexplained mystery, it seems, because if the good news of God's love is available, then why wouldn't people grasp onto it? Why wouldn't people accept it? Well, they just don't. Okay, so here is an explanation as to perhaps why that exists, you know, because there are people who uh, um, you know, there are people who don't perceive that even though, you know, something is proclaimed right in front of them, that they, you know, something about the, uh, the kingdom of God is said right in front of them, they just don't perceive it. And to the disciples, these things have been revealed because they've made the decision to come close to Jesus and to be in close enough proximity to go further. So I think that the essence of this uh, explanation as to why it is that Jesus uses parables is that he puts something out there that is kind of ridiculous and doesn't make sense. Okay, to say that there's a sower that goes out to sow seed and we know that it falls on some ground and the seed doesn't grow for obvious reasons and then it falls on good ground and begins to grow and that makes sense but that the harvest is like a hundredfold. That makes no sense whatsoever. This sounds like a nonsense story. So Jesus throws out, which sounds like a nonsense story. In other places, it sounds like an offensive story. In other words, it's, it's just something that Jesus throws out there. And some people will hear it and they will turn away because they're like, what is this guy talking about? Not interested. He's crazy. Uh, whatever. I got a life to go live. Other people will come a little bit closer. And then when they come closer, they're able to understand what Jesus is talking about through various methods. And so parables can serve like a filter. You know, um, Jesus isn't going to do all the work for us, right? Jesus comes and makes an overture of God's love. But it wouldn't be love if we were compelled to reciprocate that love. Uh, because if you compel somebody to love you, I don't care what you call it, you can't call it love. Because love, by definition, cannot be compelled or coerced. It has to be a free will choice. So Jesus comes, he brings the good news of the kingdom, he puts it out there, and it's up to us to respond. And we will not be coerced into responding, we will not be coerced into being saved. The overture is made, and it's up to us to come closer. And among many things, parables do a lot of things, but among many things, the parables serve is kind of like that filter. Okay, are you, you know, are you interested enough to take one more step towards me, right? And if you take one more step towards me, I'll reveal a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. So it's it is a call to discipleship at its essence. All right, uh, that is a lot, and I know that, uh, like I said, that can be a challenging uh, message because I don't like to think of Jesus as withholding or obscuring uh, anything from anybody. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's not like there are people who are permanently uh, barred from uh, having the good news of the gospel. It's, it's before all of us. It just takes us to take the next step and to go a little bit deeper. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care and God bless.